All right. Hello, eighth graders and seniors. It's okay, Dave. I don't want to give a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> I, appreciate it. I appreciate that though. Um, so I've been teaching in the math department, um, not here, but other school for the last 12 years. And so I just came on this year, uh, the guidance counseling team. Uh, the last couple years in my last school, I was helping the guidance counseling team. So getting some exposure to it. Uh, but I'm passionate about math and I'm passionate about helping students prepare for college. Something I found out years ago as I talked to eighth graders is often they really don't know what to expect. As I talked to them, they either thought, well, it's just a copy-paste of middle school, or they, they were clueless. Um, can I tell you right now, and the seniors hope they'll amen this, it is not a copy-paste of middle school. Amen. Okay, it is a little different. Now, you guys probably have a little bit more exposure to what high school is like than most schools because you do hang out with the upperclassmen quite a bit. I love that about killing. Um, just last week, I saw... 11th graders chatting with an 8th grader in the hallway, like like good conversations, not shallow, but like really deep conversations. It really made me thankful that you guys have those seniors and juniors and sophomores to look up to. Um, but today I want to hit some key areas that will hopefully um, <clears throat> clarify maybe some questions you've had, or maybe it will spark a question you've never had. All of the, the notes that I'm going to go over right now is in this handout. Would you mind? Um, maybe you, you think could hand those around. That way you could take it home. If there's something you, you forget, it's right there on the paper. Okay? Let's jump right into it. First, the counseling services that are offered here at Killian with myself is a tracking and selection of high school classes, including online. The standardized testing, which is PSAT. Oh, and by the way, you guys probably, your parents all got that email, right? That next Thursday, all of you 8th graders will be taking your first PSAT. Uh, Mr. Allen and I felt like this year that um, giving it to the 8th and 9th graders would be very beneficial for you. If you can take it this year, then the next year, then the next year, it'll make you more prepared. Yeah, sorry we didn't do that for the current seniors, but it's good. It could be good for you. As well as the SAT, this year is the first time that Killian will be giving the SAT on campus during the school day. The official SAT is going to be April 24th. Um, and that's a service that we want to provide to our students as well. So that won't affect you yet, but it will affect you when you become juniors. The Iowa test, the ASVAB, these are all in school. I also will help you with college fair trips, um, looking for uh, like pro, pro conference. The, I took one group of 40-something students last semester down to a Christian college fair down at McDonough. It was great. It was so good for the students to see that there's more than just one Christian college around here. Scholarship assistance, communication to colleges, I'll be sending rec letters, school profiles, transcripts, etc. I'll be helping you with that as you guys become upperclassmen. Okay? And there's many other things. Also included with that counseling service is Navience. You will become familiar with Navience. Something I'm going to push harder with um, next year's seniors and juniors, etc. Right now, um, I'm setting up all the information for the freshmen, the current freshmen, to have an account in the next month. But then by the end of the year, all the returning eighth graders, all of you who are returning, will also have a Navient's account. This is something that Killian pays for, and it's a college planning tool. It allows you to search information about any college in the US, and even some international, and match it to your interests and what you're looking for. And it gives you even a probability of whether or not you get accepted in there. Now, right now, you can't really get the probability because you're just eighth grade. But as you excel through high school, it'll help to narrow down the schools for you. Okay? Second thing here is graduation requirements. Um, in order to graduate, and how many of you are in physical science right now? All of you, right? All of you? Okay. What about Algebra 1? How many of you guys are in Algebra 1? Okay. You guys will enter high school with two high school credits done. Did you guys know that those two classes are going to be on your high school transcript? Yeah, so get a high grade. <laughs> All right, the rest are actually not going to be on your high school transcript. So those two specifically count. In addition, so we, we require 23 credits, which is um, in line with the Georgia standards. Amongst those, there's 18 core plus one PE health um, plus one, uh, four electives. Let me define those for you. There's going to be four English credits. The language arts, four, okay? So four English credits. 
four science credits, four math credits. Which if you're taking algebra one now, that means you only have three left, right? If you're taking physical science now, you only have three left that you have to do to graduate. Included in those language arts, you must take the ninth grade English and the eleventh grade American Lit. Those are both required from Georgia again. Okay? And then the other English credits you can take, different ones like AP English or whatever. The science ones, you have to have a life science, a physical science, and a chemical science, chemistry. But then the fourth one is up to you. So that fourth one could be biology two, which is, we offer bio two here, or it could be AP biology or AP psychology or something, or physics, AP physics. Math, if you have one done, then you just have to do geometry, algebra two, and pre calc. But you might go a step further and do calculus. Do it. Do class. And then you could do AP stats. There's different options for another math class. You need to take two foreign languages of the same language. And then speech. This is something especially new this year that Georgia Virtual announced that starting next year, speech will not be allowed online. So you have to take it here to graduate. All right? So there's a summary of them all. In addition, there's PE Health, which you will take as freshman next year. Um, it's now a freshman class here. And then any four electives. Let me define electives for you. It's not just choir, band, orchestra, steam, etc. Um, there's also any, any additional credit you take on top of the core classes becomes an elective. For example, I have several students in here in my AP Calculus class. That's their fifth math. So that is an elective. See, any additional class. And then, in addition to all that, you also have to, set, have to take a Bible class every year that you're here. So if you go all four years, you will graduate minimum, minimally with 23 plus four Bible is 27 credits. You have to have those graduate. Okay? Divide that by four, and that's about seven classes a year. So if you say, you know what, I want an easy year. I want to do six next year, and the sixth the next year, you're going to be behind so you need to try to shoot for seven every year, okay? Now next year it'll be easier because you'll be able to take eight credits if you wanted to, up to eight. Don't necessarily recommend that, but you could take at least seven and have a study hall. All right? Anytime you have a question, please just raise your hand. Seniors, clarify things. I'd love for you to interact, okay? And pull up to the parents on the video. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that way they can straight out this later. All right, let's move on. KC High School electives. Let me define those for you. So right now, next year, we'll have these half credit electives. Choir band orchestra art one, art two, out of art two as well. Uh, for, you'll have to start in art one though, eighth grade. Steam, then graphic design yearbook. Full credits would be any extra core class above the minimum requirements, as I already explained. Uh, we also have AP Psychology for the first time next year. Uh, that would be a, an elective. World Religions is the only Bible class that would count as an elective. Okay? So, what I just said about 27 credits, scratch that. It's actually 26. I apologize. Yeah. 23 core plus 3 Bible classes. 9th grade, 10th grade, 11th grade. Because your 12th grade Bible class is World Religions, which is an elective class. It's recognized by Georgia. Alright? And then there's many online options. Many, many, many. Okay. Let's go ahead and talk about those online options. Dual enrollment versus Georgia Virtual. Dual enrollment versus Georgia Virtual. Let's talk about pros and cons and what they're about. For dual enrollment, we here at Killian uh, have an agreement with True McConnell, so we use them. If there's ever a class that they don't offer that you're interested in, let me know, and I can pursue another college, which is not a problem. Because many colleges in Georgia offer um, Online. In fact, you technically could take up to 12 credits per semester per college, <laughs> according to Georgia standards, but that would be insane. That, but you, you actually have that ability, right? Um, True McConnell uh, is what, what we, we work with. Each class acts as a high school credit as well as a college credit exactly at the same time. So you graduate high school with college credits, but they'd also be towards your minimum requirements for high school. In addition to that, classes may be taken in summer, fall, or spring for full credit. That means if you sign up for Spanish 1 or Latin 1 next semester, 
fall semester, you finish Latin 1 or Spanish 1 by Christmas. Does that make sense? One semester, you're done. All right, that means it's a little extra work on you because you're doing a whole year in one semester, pretty much. So 100% funded by Georgia. Ah, awesome being in Georgia. It's a great perk. And then the cons, though, is it is limited in class selection. There's not a ton of options. If you want to go take underwater basket weaving, they're not going to have it. All right, we just I mean, candle making, not going to have it. Pottery, not going to have it. Um, they are limited in class selection, and also I want to make sure you understand this because most of our seniors don't even know this, I think. True McConnell classes cannot be used in calculating Pope Scholarship GPA. Um, so if you're like, you know what, I'm just going to take like 15 online courses and replace all of Killian's class, that's not going to help you towards Pope Scholarship in Zell Miller. Um, and I'll explain what Pope and Zell Miller is later. But you, they do not use college credits, okay? They do not. Georgia Virtual has a huge selection of classes. Huge. Like, I don't even know how many. It's huge. Including many AP classes. If you're interested in AP classes that we don't offer here. It does follow the typical two semester pattern. So if you want to sign up for a class, it's going to take the whole year. Unless you take it in the summer. And you can take the whole thing in the summer if you'd like. The cons, honestly, sometimes they're a little remedial. I say the AP is probably harder. But I say the other ones sometimes can be remedial, hit and miss. So a little easy sometimes. Um, and there's also little accountability. So you have to be a self-learner. You need to self-pace yourself and make sure you're keeping up with assignments. Maria? Okay, so for dual enrollment, um, are they allowed to start taking an issue or is that just what you It's a great question. So dual enrollment is designed for mostly juniors and seniors, but they can, they will make exceptions for ninth and 10th. If, if we vouch for the student. Okay. So in other words, if you've shown some academic tenacity in eighth grade, then we would recommend and say, hey, this student can handle this course. Uh, but that should be the exception, especially for ninth grade. So pretty much all of you we really won't be looking for these courses next year for the dual enrollment, but you might look for George Virtual. Yes? So if you take a dual enrollment, how would that benefit for your college? Like, as like a credit or something for college? Right. So high school credits are one credit each, but high but college is usually three, two or three, depending on the class. And pretty much all the ones they offer to you guys would be two or three credit classes for, for college. So let's say that um, your junior and senior year, you take two dual enrollment courses each. So you graduate with four dual enrollment courses, and they're all three credit college. That means you start college with four classes done, also, which is 12 credits. Four times three is 12 credits. Okay, So that would be almost an entire semester's worth. Not quite, but almost a whole semester of college. So you could start off college your second semester freshman. And if you do AP courses as well, or pass the exams, you could technically start college with your freshman year done. <laughs> You guys are very excited about that. <laughs> I know that's far away, but you need to start thinking about it now, right? Right, seniors? Yes. All right, let's move on. You guys are listening so well. Yeah, what's your question? I was kind of thinking about the credit sin, so why is it really hard to throw on class? College, college credits, they do it differently. They have, if you meet three times a week, usually it's oh. called a free credit class. Yeah, like I graduated college with 142 credits. Does that mean I took 142 classes? <laughs> I'd still be in college, right? Yeah. They call credits different things. Whereas in high school, every class is one credit or half, like PE, L, and. Okay, great clarification. Next one right here. Um, high school GPA, I want to just breeze through this. Um, in case you're, 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 you're not understanding how we do GPA, an A in a normal class is equal to a 4.0, a B is a 3.0, etc. Um, so all of your grades, if you get a 91 or you get a 99, you actually have the same exact GPA, 4.0. All right. Um, and at the end of your senior or at the end of your senior year, you have a cumulative GPA out of 4.0. So we have about eight students right now, our seniors, who have above a 4.0. How do they do that? They cheated the system? 
Yeah, they did dual enrollment or AP classes. So AP classes, we actually bump it up to 5.0, which is really nice. You get an A, you get a 5.0. You get a B, you get the same thing as an A in this class, you see? So they're harder classes, it's harder to get an A, but it does boost your GPA. Dual enrollment courses the same way. Um, but remember, with AP, or I'm sorry, with dual enrollment, Hope Scholarship and Selma Miller won't use that, okay? So just keep that in mind. I also wanted to go ahead and put in a plug here for AP classes next year. We are doubling our offerings of AP classes next year. It's awesome. So we'll have all those classes. The following year will be World Histories and hopefully Calculus BC as well. So my goal will be to have eight by the time you guys are sophomores. Okay? It's a good thing. So plan ahead. Hey, curious. When calculating GPA, this is now Hope and Zell Miller Scholarship. How many of you guys have ever heard of the Hope Scholarship or Zell Miller? You ever heard of it? Yeah? All right. This is a great thing Georgia has. Um, but it is based pretty much solely on your GPA. And a lot of students don't think about this until they're halfway through their sophomore year. And then it's kind of too late sometimes to get your GPA up to where it needs to be. You need to think about it right now, okay? Uh, right now. Hope and Zell Miller will count all your high school classes, but they will take out your eighth grade classes. So if you're, you're not doing well in high school science right now, it's not going to hurt your Hope Scholarship. They'll also take out dual enrollment courses. And for AP classes, they will only give you a max of a 4.0, okay? 4.0. So they will not, you can't boost it to 5.0 with Hope Scholarship and Zell Miller. So they're not in core classes. They will take out Bible or they had, they're non core Weighted, GPA, 4 point. They'll take out the weighted, sorry, excludes the following. Weighted GPA, they will take out all classes taken for ninth grade, and they'll take out all dual enrollment courses. I have a little handout for you um, that you can take home if you'd like. But this is from the Georgia Student Finance Commission with what currently the, the, the um, requirements are for Hope and Zell Miller scholarships on the first page. Okay? So, whole scholarship, you have to have a certain GPA, and they will pay for a lot of your tuition. If you can get a really high GPA, graduate at 3.7 or better, and have at least four rigorous classes, that would be AP classes, right? Or dual, uh, dual enrollment classes. If you can have those, then you will have 100% tuition paid at a State College in Georgia. Which is really nice. Oh, yeah, at least a 1,200 SAT. Thank you. It says that on here. So, maybe if you could. You guys might hand those out. You can take those home to your parents. All right. There's just a couple more things, and then we'll get a little bit of feedback from the seniors. Um, as they're passing this out, let's go to the next slide. I love the extracurriculars. Can I just pause on this and say this? Listen, if you are a great academic student, but you're not well-rounded, a lot of colleges are not going to want you. They don't want someone who's just going to go sit in the library all the time and never get involved, right? I highly advise you to be thinking ahead right now. How am I going to get involved in high school? If you cannot remember anything else today, remember this. Depth is better than breadth. Depth is better than breadth. I've had a lot of students who think that you have to get involved in a hundred things. You know what colleges say? Yeah, get involved in just a few things that you like to do and get depth. When you're writing applications your senior year for college, they're going to be asking you questions about how you've grown as a person. So wouldn't it be nice to look back and say, hey, starting off freshman year, I joined this club, the writing club. I don't know, I'm just saying, writing club. And I noticed a lot of these issues with my writing. I was intimidated, I was da 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 But as I've grown through the club for four years, I've not only got, um, over, overcome my fears of writing, my insecurities with it, I've also even stepped into leadership. I've been able to lead my club in these endeavors in this last year. That's what colleges want to see. Not, hey, let me build my resume with a hundred things that I've done and I've only done it for five months at a time. But that's what a lot of students think. Depth is better than breadth. Don't feel like you have to do everything. Just do a few things well, okay? You grow in them. Extracurriculars are there to help you develop as a holistic person. You are not just an athlete. You're not just a good mathematician. You're a whole person who has a lot of strengths. So develop those strengths. And that's what we at Killian are really, really burdened about. 
developing you as a whole person. We have all these athletics, academic extras. Right now, student-led clubs. There's several that started this year. Really excited about those. Doing a good job. National Honor Society. And I would, I meant to put a blank right there to ask what would you offer next year. And you don't have to give feedback. But you guys are a future high school. One day, several of you will introduce a new club to, to Killian. One day you'll take the current club and you will take it to the next step. Um, we had clubs on, on my last school that started off and they were taking baby steps, but then people came in and took them to the next level. And I remember last year there were people doing like certifications and uh, emergency response. They were uh, one club raised five grand for a for a um, uh, not orphanage foster care system. I mean, all these things, and they were just taken to the next level of what they were doing. You guys can do that. You're the visionaries of tomorrow. So have that vision. What would I like to do to help Killian be a better place? All right? Now, on the next one, I want some feedback here. Um, what can you do to start high school strong? Seniors? Before I have you, I'm not going to read those. So I'm going to go back. Seniors, what would you say? You could say, you know what? If I could go back and be an eighth grader again. I would want someone to tell me this. How to start high school strong? How would you start high school strong? Anna and Michelle? Um, I would say make sure you take your academics seriously because you're going to get to junior and senior year and start applying to colleges and realize that your GPA isn't just based on 12th grade year, it's based on 9th through 12th. Um, but at the same time, don't be stressed out about it. Like, make sure you have fun in high school. Don't just be all work, I guess. But, like, find the balance early on. Yeah. That's really good. Find the balance early on. Yeah, that's good. Michelle? Um, the positive mindset. Stay motivated, like, from the beginning. And try to stay motivated all the way throughout. Like, don't, don't get senioritis or, like, every like every end of the year itis because, like, it doesn't work out. And it can really affect your grades if you don't do that. No, keep a good mindset. Well, there's one thing that I think I did well, and there's one thing I did bad. So the one thing that I think I did well is making a target school, not necessarily one school, but the type of school that you want to go to. So like a target GPA, or target SAT score, or target what you want to focus on, so you know that when you're at that point, you have the grades, you have the scores that you need, so you have many options, so you're not limited. So if you want to go to like a top 50 school or something, make sure you're aware of that from day one, because if you start halfway through high school, it'll be really difficult to achieve your goal. And then bad thing is make sure you're taking hard classes from the beginning. Uh, learn to enjoy learning. Don't just do it to do it, because then it's going to be horrible. Just not just to memorize it. Like learn, learn to love it and take classes that you enjoy, because like AP classes are honestly better. Just because you're actually gaining understanding, it's more, uh, it's more rigorous. So it's it's fun. It's all good. Amen. It's good. You know, to echo that, I was the kind of student in high school that I did. I had no idea what I wanted to be. I felt like everyone else knew. Oh, I want to be a doctor. Oh, I want to be an astronaut. You know, I want to be. A I had no idea. And so all the time, I was thinking, how can, what classes should I take to be ready for? A big question mark. I don't know. Uh, it was hard for me to get a target. So what I did was, like what Candace said, I thought, hey, I, would, I just want to get as much exposure to classes as I can and deepen that understanding so that I can do anything I want when I reach the point. And I'm glad I did that. It helped me be a better teacher. So that, that was great. Thank you, Candace. Ethan. Uh, when you're deciding what you want to do, whether it's classes or extracurricular, find something that's going to interest you and that you're passionate about. Because if you are just going to be stale and not want to do something, then it's going to be harder on you. And I understand that there are certain things that you kind of have to do, especially those core classes. But find something and go reach out for something that you're interested in. Uh, when I was in ninth grade, I took beginning programming for the first time. And I never knew that that's something that I would want to go to, into into college. I'm actually going in to be a computer science major. So definitely go in and find something that interest you, but you're not committed to it yet, and let it take you. And just be passionate about what, about what you want to do. It's great, man. It's great. Okay, any other seniors? It's fine. Dorothy. 
Um, but when there's an opportunity, like an extracurricular opportunity, don't just wait for your friends to be like, oh, hey, okay, you want to join this, like, this club or this sport. And just go for it on your own. And don't let peer pressure get in the way of doing things. Just because your friends might not be doing it, just go for it. And also in classes, when you're signing up for classes, don't sign up because someone else is taking that class. Sign up because of what you're interested in. Even if you think it might be easier or more people you might end up struggling more. It's not a class that you enjoy. So, just do that. That's good, Martin. That's really good. This is what I wrote down for how to start strong. Make every grade count. Make every grade count. Learning is not all about grades, but grades are a reflection of your learning and academic tenacity. Um, I wish I had a dollar for every time a student said, oh, I wish I would have cared more about grades my freshman year. Um, it's hard to dig yourself out of a hole whenever you're lazy, your freshman year. So please make every great count. Number two, start building a resume right away with awards, community service, leadership opportunities, etc. You're not too young, guys and girls. You're not too young. You know, if you wanted to go shadow an engineer for a week, go shadow an engineer for a week. You know, you're like, well, I'm kind of young. It's not a problem. Go try to do it. Go do some community service. Maybe this summer you should have a goal. Instead of just waking up late every day, I'm going to commit. Every Friday morning, I'm going to go to this one place, and I'm going to give a few hours of my time, community service. It's a good thing to do. Not only to develop you as a citizen, but to also later, when you're writing your applications, to look back and say, this is how I've grown as a person. Okay? Prepare for high-stakes tests. That would be like SAT, PSAT. By doing your best in core classes and reviewing often, um, like, like Candace said, go into learning for the love of learning, not just to get by. Like, oh, I just got to get this credit done. Um, what's the opposite of aspiring in knowledge? You know what it is? It's aspiring to be ignorant. Right? Opposite of aspiring to know is aspiring to not know or be ignorant. Aspire to know. All right? Knowledge. Next. Do something productive in the summer. I already said that. Shadow program, internship class, college enrichment camp, et cetera. Or just build a robot in your garage. Some of the best inventions that have happened is because people who didn't have the money to go to some expensive camp just got in their garage and tried to make something, create something. Like, whoa, look at that. I have a student on Guam right now who's a junior, and he's getting his, he's getting his first patent. His first patent, because he created something. He just got out of his comfort zone and said, I'm, I'm interested in this product. And he made a new product. You could do it. And by the way, that's not because I taught him. <laughs> I, uh, I just taught him a few math things. It was the science teacher that helped him with that. <laughs> Decide right away that you will take some rigorous courses in high school and pave the way with attentive work in ninth grade. Remember, productive people go the extra mile. If you're lazy next year, but then suddenly going into 10th grade year, you're like, hey, I want to take these AP courses now. I finally got serious. We're probably going to have to put you on a probationary period for a year for you to show us that you can do the academics because we don't want to set you up for failure. I hope you guys understand that. So do your best now and next year. Are there any quick questions? Yes? For the Hope Scholarship, you said that they will take part in a 4.0. Does that mean you take AP course that the A would be kind 4.0. Did you guys hear Tashina's question? So AP classes are only considered 4.0. 4.0 for Hope and Self Miller Scholarship. So if you got a B in that class and it was AP for the Hope Scholarship, they would count that as a 2.0. Correct. Okay. Yes. Um, you said that you would do the AP course and then you would take the AP course and then you would do the AP course. Okay. I think that's correct. <laughs> but I know they don't give a 5.0 grade. I know that. I'm not 100% sure if they don't give like a 4.0 for an 85. Yeah, I think they would have to, yeah. But the bar is actually fairly low for cell millers. It's 3.7, but that's considering it's only on 4.0. So it would be great. Any other questions? OK. I anticipated that eighth graders, you might not necessarily want to ask questions in front of a lot of people. So I asked the seniors to come in, because the last few minutes we have 10 minutes, about 9 minutes. I want you guys to just kind of move your chairs towards the senior and ask your questions that have come up during this time. The seniors will be happy to help you with those questions, okay? 
They've been in your shoes before. All right? So maybe if seniors are sitting together, someone go to a group that doesn't have a senior. Just get together and chat for the last few minutes. It's been great talking to you guys.